Hey, so welcome to uh, my fourth episode of podcasting, talking. Oh, do you want to come say hi? Georgie. Um, talking about knitting and my little yarny, yarny antics. Um, I'm based in Hertfordshire with my other half, fiance, and my little cat, Audrey, who frequently follows me around the house where she's here right now. Hey, just sitting at my feet. Um, yeah, so I've been knitting for, this is coming into my third month of knitting. I've done two, two full months now. And I'm just sort of sharing my journey. Uh, it's quite exciting. I feel like I found my little, my little niche. Um, I think next week or the week after, I'll talk about why coffee, yoga, and yarn make sense. I promise. Um, but anyway, I digress. Today I'm wearing my grain shawl, and I think it's something along a weekend cardigan that I crocheted a long time ago and actually I've been hiding upstairs and we don't have heating but it's actually quite quite warm down here so probably don't need this on. Um, but yeah this is my grain shawl that I finished last week or two weeks ago now. Um, yeah so welcome let's <laughs> really Audrey what are you doing? So anyway, let's start. So my only work in progress really at the moment that I'm going to share is something that I've been really, really excited to knit ever since I saw it. Um, she's probably one of the most talked about knitwear designers at the moment. And that is the Ninilchik Swantro by Caitlin Hunter. And I cast this on Friday, so it will be five days ago. Um, because I was sort of, I, I don't want to talk about being unwell, but I've been slightly unwell and I was feeling a bit rotten and I thought, let's do a selfish knit. I did say two weeks ago that I wouldn't cast another garment on for myself, but this is going to be hopefully really, really useful. Um, as I mentioned, I do a lot of outdoor work, so I work in coffee. Some, sometimes I'm also a yoga teacher, but we'll carry, we'll talk about that soon. Um, so I've gone for coffee-ish colours that hopefully won't will hide hide it if I get a bit dirty throughout the day and also that I can layer thermals underneath and maybe thin jumpers and then put coats and things over the top which reminds me I must make myself a pair of fingerless mittens and a pair of mittens because I've given every single pair I've made away um, but anyway I'll show you so I'll show you where I'm at let's uh, guess this is the best way Excuse the string, string everywhere, the yarn everywhere. So this is what I have got so far. Um, I split for the sleeves a lot, lot earlier than Caitlin recommends, just because I think I want the movement and for the for the poncho part of it. I suppose not to raise it up too much when I move my arms. I think when I'm making coffee, it's going to be kind of important that I keep my belly warm as well as everything else so fingers crossed that works I mean so far it, it's okay and I'm really really pleased with my colour choice I maybe could have done the light grey which you can see in here as my main colour to sort of more match how hers turned out however being the, the little grubby monkey that I am I figured that the slightly darker medium grey would be better for the rest. So I'm nearly done with the colour work. Uh, I've got I think maybe six more rows and then I'm just stocking that on the body. And then I have the arms to do and I can't decide if I should try and finish off the colour work which I think I will try and do and then go into ribbing but obviously I'm going to have to be a bit clever with my joining and decreases. Who knows how that's going to go given that I've been knitting for the amount of time that I have. But so far the, the fabric itself is knitting up absolutely beautifully. I really really like it and I think it will block quite quite alright. 
I think I've done like the Hutchie stole my <laughs> Audrey stole the the little yarn I have hanging from it. Hey, little monkey. Um, so I, I think it will come out lovely. Uh, I'm knitting this out of Westshore to easy for you to say. Uh, Wishful Yorkshire Spinners, uh, Jacob Fleece, 100% Jacob. Aha, there you go. Oh, she's watching it. Um, this is the medium grey. It is actually coming out quite accurate. It's nice and soft and squishy. It's still a bit rustic, but I, I feel like that's sort of my jam. Can you load? Yeah. I feel like so, my jam is quite rustic yarns. Um, I'm really, really excited to carry on with this project and finish it. I mean, how exciting. Big, cosy, colour work, wool happiness. Um, highly recommend this pattern. I have had basically everyone that's seen me knit it isn't a knitter, so they've not kind of got it, so to speak. But everyone's looked at the picture of the final item and gone, hmm? wondered why I'm making it, but I've got a feeling. <laughs> You're a bit of a tinker today. Um, this is Audrey's just, just having a bit of fun, aren't you? Um, yeah, so I'm hoping to get some feedback actually from them once it's complete. And I've got a feeling that there's gonna be a couple of people in my family that want them, which is a lot of knitting as a gift, so. We'll see. We'll see who's on the nice list. Everyone's on the nice list. Um, yeah, so that's my work in progress that I've got to show you, really. So, so I also finished, I think I showed you a sock that I started two weeks ago, and I have actually finished it. I haven't blocked it or anything, so it does look a little bit funky. But it is out of the yarn that I knitted knitted myself yes I did knit this all myself um, I dyed it myself so this is my own my own fun little colorway I created that if you go back to last week's episode you'll see it's sort of inspired by a, a very a very good book that I love um, the pattern is little paddocks and it was a test knit for Ambrose knits um, Miss Marple's theories I really, really loved this pattern. It was really quick to sort of learn and remember. Uh, the, it kept my interest, which I was a bit nervous as a sock person. I didn't think I was going to be. But turns out I might. I might quite be. Now I haven't cast the. Ooh, I haven't cast the other halves of these socks on. I've got two, which I will get to very soon. But. The fact that I cast on the Ninel chick kind of has made me a bit more of a monogamous knitter. Whoa, monogamous knitter. That's gonna be my practice words. Because I practice words. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> but yes, very cute sock, really like it. I feel like these two socks that I've made are going to be fantastic with clogs and tights in the winter. But we'll see, I, I mean, the last few months I've been a very lazy dresser. Dresser? Yeah, you know what I mean, like, easy, easy clothing as opposed to, maybe we'll talk about that one day, back in the day, my 1940s and 50s get up. Very different to most of my aesthetic nowadays. Anyway, um, another finished object. I have, I don't actually have with me because it was a gift. Um, I'm gonna carry on talking and show you what I made um, over the top. So I have made a pair of Speedy Selby Mittens by Skein Dear Knits, because Skein Dear Knits, um, they are, I believe, the initial pattern that you get if you join the Selby Mitten Club 2. Um, they are fantastic. They do knit up very, very quickly. I actually couldn't believe it. They were one of them was done in less than an evening, and the other one I did the following morning. Um, 
I knit them out of Rowan felted Aran weight, again because it was a quick chunky knit and that was stuff that I already had in my stash. I'm really really pleased with how they turn out and I can't recommend the pattern enough, especially for those who really have not done much colour work before. I found it an absolute breeze, there was no real long, long floats to catch or anything like that, it was just knit knit knit. Um, SSK, the slip slip knit and knit two together and that's basically a lot. Highly recommend, I'm really really happy with how they've turned out and I believe the owner is quite happy too. They fit her well and yeah, speedy sale with mittens. What's this? Oh dear. So for my final finished object, I feel like I've managed to do a lot of knitting, really. I've not got too much to show, or do I? I don't really know. I don't know what the going rate is, but I feel like I've done quite a lot and achieved quite a bit, considering I am starting to settle more back into my day-to-day -day life again. Um, because I really have been on mum and done nothing much, but staying in bed. Are you coming up? Come, you come say hi. Or do you want to sit on something? Do you want to sit on this? Come. Come on. You come? Oh. What are you doing? Mm-hmm. <laughs> um. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty happy with how much knitting I'm doing. I can't wait to finish that swan tray, which is more of a swan tray because it's more sweater than swan tray, I think now. But anyway, stop talking rubbish. <laughs> um, so my final finished object, um, a pair of mittens that I actually made up the pattern. I've got a feeling that they are going to be too long by the wrist. Um, and the thumb may be too short, but they are for a very, very, very tiny person. Um, so hopefully she'll either grow into them or, you know. But anyway, so these are my own design mittens. Uh, I knit them using, this main grey colour is uh, Black Yarns Shetland in the four ply. And this is the contrast colour is 100% merino which I dyed at the fibre lounge on Saturday which was a really 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 fun fun day or a couple of hours in the morning uh, I got a uh, oh so I did let's talk about that after let's finish talking about these so this was again very out of my comfort zone colour wise so this was the first yarn I dyed from the workshop um, and I'm really pleased how it knitted up. This was, uh, again, I, I think I mentioned, but it was a completely own made up pattern. Uh, my other half, Alex, who's a little angel, drew me up this butterfly. I started drawing one and he was like, oh, I think I can do it. And he did and he, he did it justice because He's a clever, clever one. Um, I'm not really sure what else to say. They're very small mittens. For a very small person. I think they're fun, cute, colourful. And I could have added more purple in, but I was scared that I was going to run out of yarn. So I held back a bit. So maybe there's going to be a square for a blanket or a pom-pom. I don't know. Maybe some more colour work for another pair of tiny, tiny mittens this time. So that leads me on to, I'm going to quickly show you the other yarns that I dyed up uh, quickly before I round this whole thing up. Um, so like I said, I went to, ooh, right everyone, um, sit down, we'll have story time, get yourself a glass of milk or a cup of tea and we'll talk. Um, <laughs> Oh dear. 
here. So I went to the Fibre Lounge in Kings Langley, which is a lovely, lovely, lovely local yarn store. If you want to have a little look online, they do also sell things online. And there are quite a few other workshops coming up, so I can highly recommend them. Um, I did my workshop with Wooly Yarn, who's amazing. Um, she spins and dyes, and they are big, bold, chunky colours. Very, very different to what I would knit with, but I figured if I'm going to do learning, I may as well get out of comfort zone. That is mine. Get out of my comfort zone, very good English, um, and give it a go. And I did, it was a really, really nice class. It lasted about two hours, and we got five mini skeins to dye up after a little bit of a talk, health and safety, obviously, um, and a bit of colour theory. So, you already saw my purple one. And then I decided I would do, oh, one's missing. Bear with me just one moment. Hey, found it. So then I decided to do a festive mini skein because I do really, really like Christmas. <laughs> um, if you stick around here, you'll, you'll see, I'm sure you will. Um, so I went for a sort of a minty green with a red. Uh, I added a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of magenta to the standard red. But I added a tiny bit of magenta to the standard red to get that. I watered down some of the greens to get it a bit paler and the same with the reds. And I'm really, really pleased how this has come out. but. When we, when I done it, I'll do it. Look at that. Very fun. Um, I can't wait to see how these colours all come together. Um, but when I'd finished doing it, when I'd finished uh, dyeing this one before we put it in the microwave, which we put it in the microwave to set it just for ease and speed, which I don't have a microwave so I'm a bit gutted that I can't do that. Um, I'm just going to call her Wooler because I, I well I can. Um, so when I finished that she actually said that she feels like a um, more pinky colour would be better and it's kind of a bit what everyone's doing at the moment. Now, I'm not one to go, oh I'll follow trends. but. I did understand what she meant because though the colours are great, it kind of, it didn't pop. So I did another one and I did magenta but with a pop of a splash of red in it and I'm really pleased how this one came out. A lot darker and a lot mintier and a lot brighter magenta and I just love the way that colours interact with each other it's just yeah and she she did give us a really really nice no super wash yarn I think I, I don't know what to make with it but we'll see um, then I think maybe Halloween and autumn got the better of me and I went to make slightly more natural colours because I thought well I may as well head back to what I might knit with and actually I think this is my least favourite. I'm not sure that I'm going to ever really want to knit with this. Well we'll see, it might knit up really really nicely um, but it's sort of peaches, yellows, oranges and a lot of browns. I do think I do think maybe this will knit up quite nicely, but it was all an experiment. It was all, you know, figuring out how the dyes interact with each other. And it has really, really inspired me to try some more dyeing myself. And then my final skein, I really, this is again, not at all what I would normally go for color wise or yarn wise at all I guess it's super wash which I've never really never really used or been inspired to 
but I might, I might be. There's definitely a place for it and I understand why. And this is it. So it is basically generally a sort of lilac and magenta but with all kinds of colours going through it. It was sort of a bit almost festive in a way I felt. You know like fairy lights or something. But I'm really really happy with how this one came out. It's making me smile. And I really really I can't wait to knit with this but I don't know what it should be. So if you have any ideas let me know. I don't know if this is going to be enough for maybe some colour work mittens for myself. It, it would not go with most things that I own, but it's just, it's beautiful. It is really, I'm really happy with it. <laughs> um, yeah, I will maybe add in a bit of footage, because I did take a tiny bit, just of the, the workshop itself. And yeah, <laughs> hopefully, hopefully I'll meet you very soon. I am going to Yarn Porium on Friday and Saturday, so if anyone's going and can advise me on what to do with my mini skeins or anything to do with the arms on my Ninil Chick Swancho, how I should deal with colour work and decreasing or not decreasing, etc., that would be fantastic. Anyway, in the meantime, I hope you have a fantastic couple of weeks. Um, I can't imagine our podcast again until two weeks' time. And thank you for watching. Uh, do get, on, get in touch on here or on Instagram if you would like to become knitting buddies or just buddies in general. I'm quite an open book, really. And yeah, but I'm going to go off, feed the cat and get on with my day-to-day -day life. Yeah. <laughs> See you soon. Take care. Bye.